safe distance to measure the measures and control and introducing alternate seating to the most camp the number of visitors. <sighs> So guys, we are pretty much in the same boat together. Lockdowns, cancelled events, social distancing. Which leaves pretty much most of us event photographers and videographers alike grounded at home and jobless. This is because there can only be a maximum number of 10 people. Some countries have reduced it to four people at any given point of time. This means that most events, seminars, weddings, etc. that we usually shoot are cancelled. But being given time off our busy schedules, we can finally spend some quality time with our family, friends, spend some time catching up on our favourite shows and movies on Netflix but at the same time we shouldn't leave our cameras in the dry box to rot but okay thankfully your cameras cannot rot in a dry box because it's a moisture free environment okay but you get what I mean don't leave your camera in the dry box to rot despite this being a situation where you have pretty much nothing to shoot with them so here are some things you can do during your free time as a photographer or a videographer for example a beginner sony shooter may not know how to grade s-log2 and he tries to use s-log2 on a shoot and does not know how to process the video files when he comes back to post process it so this is the time we're going to try all these settings out and just experiment with it at home so that the next time you go out on shoot you will know what to use for the specific type of shoot so another example is on photo jobs after i got my a7r3 i was down with a lot of work which means that i did not really have the time to go and try out what this 42 megapixels really meant and really only after getting grounded at home then i got to try and see for myself what this 42 megapixels really meant because I set up a backlit situation and see how much I can really push this camera to because usually on shoot I'm using a mirrorless camera and I can see how my exposure is in the EVF itself I usually will get the settings right in camera so during this time I really tried to screw up the photo as hard as possible in camera to see how much I can really save in the edit for me, I went out with a few of my friends, as you'll see later, to try different types of photography. So, on one occasion, we did long exposure photography. The photos may not be the best due to the traffic situation right now, but we used this opportunity to try something new. I also tried my luck with landscape photography. Some wildlife photography, although it's on a very small scale, and also we managed to get a time lapse of a sunset although I forgot to switch off the autofocus mode while recording video
So guys, we are here at Changi Point Coastal Walk to shoot a sunset and I'm joined today with Joshua and he'll be taking the photos and I'll roll a time lapse of the sunset because I I have taken one in this location before and I think it was decent enough so today I'll be trying something different So a bit of bad news there's actually quite a bit of rain out there and this is actually our third time trying to catch the sunset although it's in a different part of Singapore but I think it's still worth the try so we'll see how Okay, in case you're wondering I'm vlogging on the A73 with the Sigma 14 to 24 f 2.8 and the road video I think it's the micro ah. I forgot the name okay guys so sorry no time lapse of the sunset um, because there was, as you can see just now, there was just a huge bunch of rain clouds in the way until the very last minute so we can only take some photos but, but we got pictures of crab <laughs> but along the way, we managed to get pictures of some crabs like crabs, like really tiny crabs with the Sony A7R 3 and the 7200 F 2.8 G Master So if you know what species these crabs belong to, do leave a comment to let me know as well. And after that we sat by the ocean to get a few pictures of the stars, which I didn't even know was possible in Singapore. And a shot of the moon. Cheesy you may say. Many photographers have spoken about this before, that is to take one camera and one lens, go out to a cafe or a playground, sit there and use that one lens, for example a wide, a prime or a telephoto lens, don't bring your 24 70 out because the 24 to 70 is a very general range. Any other lens than the 24 to 70 will help you get a different perspective and will train your creativity so that the next time you're out on a field, you can capture better shots with the different lenses you have. So you know the feeling when you're shooting and then suddenly you think of something that you can do with your camera but you don't know how to exactly execute it or you see a shot online and you think, wow, how can I do that? So now you have some time rather than to catch up on Netflix or your favourite shows on your YouTube channels Not saying you can't do them, just you have to do some time management Go and search up on Google, YouTube for how to execute these type of shots I'm pretty sure there's a lot of information and guides and tutorials out there to actually help you to learn how to get what you want So sometimes we do not have the time to actually manage whatever that is in our hard disk Sometimes we just have too many hard disks laying around For example, I have at least 10 4TB hard disks laying around and I don't really keep track of how much storage they have left and just keep dumping extra data in and arrange my projects in a way that let's say I have to go back and look for certain data I can actually find it so like me you can choose to shift some of your data from your newer hard disk into the older ones to fill them up first so that you can see how much space you're really left with on your new hard disk and this will let you know should you purchase new hard disk soon So talking about clearing and deleting old projects off your hard disk Wait a minute Because there may be these 
few photos that you really got lucky when you're starting out your photography career. And since there's so much more time now, you can dig out your old photos, sieve them out, find the best ones, and re-edit them to the style that suits you today. Not only that, you can also see how much you have grown along the way. From a photo that you considered that, wow, I'm a god at photography, then to that same feeling down. Even your editing might have changed from last time a dull, dark coloured photo just because you didn't know how to process it in post or a very backlit photo just that you didn't know certain settings to process it now you can better balance it out so not only can you play around with the sliders and see how much you can really re-edit those old photos to your current liking but also you can see how much you have really grown over the span of that few years you will feel very satisfied about it trust me on a normal day you may not have the chance to really go and dive deep and dig out works to present to these clients because usually you may be just getting jobs because of word of mouth client referrals, etc. So take this time to update your portfolio and start closing deals when the economy returns. So that has been my tips and suggestions on what you can do as a photographer and videographer during your free time, especially during this period between February, March, April and God knows how long this situation will last. So use this time to not only see other people's works, upgrade yourself, learn more about your gear, explore them more, and look back at your past works to see how much you have grown. So during this period, do stay safe, listen to your government, remember your social distancing, and it will soon be over. Once again, leave a like, subscribe to stay tuned for more upcoming content, and leave a comment down below if you have any more tips and suggestions or topics you would like me to discuss in a future video. And that's it from me. See you soon.